welcome to episode three of Button Mashing. It is the 26th of February. Uh, my name is James, I'm your host, and today with me I've got Carl. Hello. Apologies first and foremost before we get into this week's show. Uh, we would have done one last week, bar of technical issues, which prevented us from getting our recording out. Um, so we're going to be merging two weeks of news together today. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the Nintendo Switch, which releases literally next week, uh, and some of the things around that. We're going to talk about For Honor, which we picked up, or I picked up, uh, a week or so ago at launch and played through and my impressions of that. We've got some news items to talk about as we've got Pokemon Go gets an update. We've got Metal Gear Solid the movie uh, and where that's going and we're also looking at Final Fantasy 7 the remake. So uh, diving straight into this week's content Carl, a few things around the Switch. First of all we're getting it this week so we're going to get a new console uh, into the game this week. Uh, are you excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you give us stuff? Uh, um, yeah, I'm excited to a certain extent. I'm excited to maybe own one in a year because it'll be the last Nintendo thing I've owned for a while. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking about picking one up, but not for a while. So that's a positive sign, though, that you're thinking about picking one up. I mean, uh, you know, you haven't had, you didn't have the Wii U, you didn't have a Wii. Nope. Um, I played so a Wii. Was the GameCube bit. your last console then? Yes. Last Nintendo console. And the one with the hand handhelds for a long time. <laughs> so. Uh, I did buy a, uh, oh, a Game Boy Color again recently to play Pokemon. But that, well, well, I say recently, well, it's probably a year ago now. I was going to say that's it's not exactly an old exactly console. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's that says something about the way they've marketed this and and what the product is. Then, if it's got someone who hasn't bought them for a while interested, I mean, I've already said I was interested. We talked about it at, uh, with the launch announcement that I pre-ordered it and then cancelled it and. Um, I haven't been tempted to pre-order one, but I've been watching the press and, and all the unboxings that have gone on this week and been keeping a check on how that's all come about. And um, so far, at least, uh, there's, it seems really positive. People seem excited yeah, yeah. by it. I still think the lack of games seems to be a big issue for me, but Zelda is obviously I think a all, all new consoles kind of are, aren't they? Yeah, and if you watch if you watch and read a lot of the gaming press, it's the, the sort of excitement around this. One, obviously, the new console and some of the tech. Um, I think the mobility is what has got everyone excited. Those who travel, been able to play on the move, the sort of uh, multiplayer thing that that's bring is in, going yeah. to someone's house, setting it up, um, just local connections between the two devices wirelessly and playing multiplayer. I mean, that sounds great. But the main thing that's got everyone excited is Zelda, isn't it? That's what everyone wants. And I yeah, think but that's I mean, it's going to sell the system. Yeah, I think they've made a mistake by having it on the Wii U as well, really. I think they had to. I think they backed themselves into a corner because they yeah. they so that that platform hasn't had its own Zelda a decent game. Yeah, no, it's well, it's had, it's had a few decent games, but it didn't. It never got a proper <laughs> Zelda. It had a couple of remasters, um, but it never got its own Zelda. And people yeah. bought that console on that promise, so they've kind of had to release it on both. I mean, tech wise, we've talked about this previously, so that we won't dwell on it. But the two are very, 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 very similar. Uh, mm. And even you know when uh, Nintendo are differentiating the two. The key selling point is uh, enhanced audio, which is just you know, is that going to bother you on a portable device? I don't know. Does that does that fuss me? I have to say though, given I I could go and buy Zelda on my Wii U if I wanted to, but if I feel like I'm going to get a Switch down the line, I'm very tempted to wait and buy it on the Switch so that I can play it portably. Because I feel like it's one of those games that you're going to need to sink the hours into. Um, I'm sure it will get great reviews. I think there's been enough feedback of the pre the pre-release stuff that people are going to be excited about it. I think there's enough positive stuff coming out. I think it will get good reviews. I, I wouldn't be surprised. It looks it, it looks really nine. good. Yeah, it, it does. Looks really good. I mean, there's no space for it in my life. We'll, we'll come on to what I'm buying for next week, which will be taking up most of my time. But it's coming up against a lot of different uh, big, lengthy games in the next few weeks. You know, Mass Effect, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, um, to name a couple. So I, I think it's got some competition. For me, that rules it out. Uh, I'd love to play with the technology. I'd love to handle one. And for the tech enthusiast in me wants to buy one. But uh, I don't think there's any point yet, to be honest. I feel like it needs yeah. needs a few more games in its library first. Um, I also think there's a few things that came out this week. So this isn't in our list of things to talk about. But I did read this week that um, it's not getting virtual console at launch. So for those people who are looking forward to be able to pick up copies of their favourite N64 games or whatever they want to buy through the virtual console space, that's not available at launch. It's going to come further down the line. <laughs> oh, so my God. There's a few things there that, that you know, um, I think I think it's definitely something to be excited about. The feedback about how it looks and feels on the move is great. I just think it needs a library of games to make the use of that, and at the moment it lacks it. So I, I'm happy to wait for the time being, but inevitably we'll get one down the line. 
I'm sure. So, the couple of things that we're going to talk about that sort of fall into the Switch category, and as I said, these are two weeks' worth of news now. So, the first one on the subject of Switch and Zelda is the Breath of the Wild Season Pass, which was announced. So, mm-hmm. I think this is... Uh, it's not Nintendo's first foray into Season Passes, but it's the first time they've ever offered DLC in Zelda. It's going to be um, available from the 3rd of March, apparently. Yep. Although the content, I think, um, the actual packs aren't going to come until summer and then the holiday season. So I don't know what you're yeah. getting at launch. But in terms of what's in there, let me tell you what's in there and let me get your reaction to this. So there are two drops going to come in the DLC throughout this year. Mm-hmm. Summer 2017 is going to get you a new Cave of Trials challenge. It's going to get okay. you hard mode and a new feature for the in-game map. Which okay. could mean anything. Yeah. So, Dark shot. Anything? So, yeah, new Cave of Trials challenge. I mean, obviously, don't really know what that is. Um, I guess it's an extra challenge just to like extend little, the gameplay. Yeah, it's going to be like a little extra part of the map, I'd imagine, that you yeah. just go into. Like and, another dungeon. Uh, and hard mode, you know, I guess for those who've completed it and want to keep playing it and want that replay value to be able to crank it up a level, make it more difficult. Yeah. That might appeal. I still think that a new feature for the in-game map is so vague. I mean, you said hookshot, but I, I don't read that as being an in-game play mechanic. I read that as something that you can do with the game map. But it's, it's the in-game map specifically, so I've got no idea what that is. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So then pack yeah. two, which comes in the holiday, which I think gets a little meatier, so you're going to have to wait nearly a year for this. <laughs> um, a new dungeon, uh, a new original story, and okay. then additional challenges. So, you know, I think it sounds like it's something to extend the life of the game, basically. Yeah. And I guess if you're a diehard uh, Zelda fan, it's probably worth the money we're talking about, or less than 20 quid. Yeah, it's not much for a season pass by why, anyone's why standard these days. you now, though, given that you get nothing. Um, oh, actually, no, I've lied. I've just reread my notes. There is something you get for purchasing at day one. So if you purchase it now, you will immediately unlock three extra treasure chests in the game's Great Plateau location. Oh, yes. Two of them will contain useful items. That's all it says. <laughs> going to be and two rubies. The third or one, and I can't see anyone wanting to do this in a Zelda game. Bear in mind that this game is about taking you away to another world. It's about fantasy. Yeah. The third chest contains a Nintendo Switch logo T-shirt that Link can wear during his adventure. So you can brand link in the in the new Nintendo Switch T-shirt and run around and, and take on Ganon and, and all of his armies and whatever else. Why the hell would you want to do that? That's that's presuming Ganon's in this. Oh well, oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. I'm yeah. an assumption. Um, I think it's a safe one though. To be fair, if I was a betting man, I think yeah. I'd feel safe about this bet. Um, but yeah, I just think that's a really strange thing. I don't. I'm all up for the rest of that DLC. Sounds great. And for twenty quid, I think you're getting a good deal there. To be honest, over the course of a year, and if it's one of the, if it is as big as everyone says it is, it feels like one of those games that you're going to be playing for a long time, finding new things, exploring anyway, and yeah. then you're going to discover all these new things when you get your DLC to keep that game fresh. Just think the idea of Link wearing a T-shirt with the Switch logo on is shit. I just mm. think it's crap. It's a bit like giving him a Coke can or something, isn't it, for his energy drink or something? Yeah, it's, it's going to be great it. for people who are streaming the game and, can they, and uh, they can get free uh, free advertisement on the Switch. Well, exactly. It's probably why they're doing it, isn't it? Yeah. Because you can presumably unlock that same T-shirt on the Wii U version. I don't know. Unless the DLC isn't available on the Wii U, I don't know. In fact, let me just reread my notes. It's available on both. Okay. Uh, and they will offer two extra content packs. Uh, no, so just, as far as it, it seems, at least for the information we have, it's available on both. Very random. Fair enough. The second Switch-related, but not Nintendo-related um, article refers to something we actually talked about on the last episode of our main podcast, uh, in episode 12, which is um, a Sony patent for a device which looks very Switch-esque. And uh, you'll see it on the video now if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're not, then you might want to look this up uh, or have a look at the video at a later date. But it's uh, a patent that was filed in 2015. Uh, a NeoGAF user called Ponpo found this and posted it. A few of the agencies picked up on it. And it looks like um, a Switch-esque device. It looks like a tablet screen in the middle. Uh, and then basically two halves of a PlayStation pad bolted to that device. Um, obviously, it's just a, pay- a patent. There's no guarantee that they're even going to produce this. No. It did get me thinking. If uh, PlayStation went down this route, and then maybe Xbox also did this, what would you like to see um, from those two libraries of games 
on a Switch-esque style device that you could move around with, and would that interest you more or less than the Nintendo version of it does now? Uh, well, there's obviously a lot more games that I play for the PlayStation, well, saying that, um, than there would be for the Nintendo, so yeah, I'd give it a go. And what about if the uh, Microsoft did one? I mean, if those three products all existed together, which one's getting mm. you money? The, probably the Microsoft one, because that's where I've got most of my games. So the, if you, they decide to put um, the digital ones on there that you've already owned, um, yeah. like, say, for the original Xbox ones, something similar to that, then, uh, yeah, definitely the Xbox. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. I, think, I can't see it happening. No, I can't see it happening, to be honest. Although, I guess it depends. If the Switch goes and sells really well, uh, and there's a huge demand and a market for it, maybe they'll have to have to think about it. Mm. It's, uh, it'd be an interesting step. Um, I don't think, to be honest, the processing power that those two machines have could fit into a tablet-style device and still give you the performance you'd be looking for. No, definitely not. Nintendo is, is in a good position where this technology move is concerned because they're known for having the weaker console. No one expects Nintendo to bring out a machine as powerful as the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One. So yeah. I don't think there is that cons- that sort of expectation there. Um, and none of their games that they're famous for really require it. Um, you could have like a Mini 360 or a Mini PS3. I could see them doing that. Yeah, that'd be quite well, cool. Sort of idea. The older library Pan- games. Pen. Yeah. And I guess then you fall into sort of PS Vita territory and stuff, don't you, as well? Where yeah, definitely. It didn't really do that well. So it'll be interesting. I mean, we don't know yet how well the Switch will sell, but and, and a lot of these patents never come to anything. But I just thought it was interesting to mention because as a, as far as a concept goes, I mean, it looks quite interesting. I quite like the the look of this diagram. It, it is just a drawing, but who knows? It kind of looks like someone's just popped a um, an iPhone between two PlayStation yeah, it's holding interesting, actually. I'm holding. just holding my PlayStation controller in my hand at the moment and, and looking at that, and you're right, size-wise, if those were direct comparisons in terms of their size to the control pads, um, then actually, yeah, that screen wouldn't be that big. No, it wouldn't. Maybe a sort of... Probably large, be about a size, iPhone, to be fair. be an iPhone Plus, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, interesting. Okay, so that's that's the Switch anyway. It comes out, I think, on the 3rd. Is that right? 3rd of March? End of, next, end of this week? Uh, yes, 3rd yeah. of March. Looking forward to seeing how that goes. Uh, obviously, there's loads of stuff online already about people unboxing it and, and lots of YouTubers mm-hmm. who've got access to them. So let's yeah. see where that goes. And um, hopefully, we'll get our hands on one at some point of a play. Indeed. So let's uh, let's come back to For Honor in a second. And I said, let's, let's cover off a few of the news things that have gone on this week or the last two weeks. So first of all, a game that we both love and play every day, Pokemon Go. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Bollocks. So, Probably about a year ago now <clears throat> that I played that. Every day. In it's fact, been, I don't think I played it every day. It's been a number of months since yeah. I last turned that game on. Um, yeah. If you're still playing it, or if you're in, you might be enticed back, then for those who are interested, uh, there's a new update being released in the last week. It should be live now. If you're playing, if you want to download it and get act, uh, access to that, including 80 new Pokemon. So this is effectively bringing in gold and silver's Pokemon, um, of which we've got people like uh, Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Totodile. I'm reading these off a list. I don't remember them. Uh, and then you've got um, a mixture of new evolutions as well for the existing Pokemon. So if you are playing that game regularly, and I suppose you've leveled up all your Pokemon and you're getting a little bit bored of the ones you've got uh, and catching all the same things, then I could imagine that an injection of 80 new ones would freshen that up a little bit. Um doesn't really draw me back in. Uh, they've added a few new things like berries and stuff and, and mm. candy items, but uh, I'm not going to be picking that back up and playing it, to be honest. I, I think that the main problem for me was having to sit by a... Poke Center for God knows how many hours to collect these berries and all that malarkey. But yeah, you no. don't want to spend the money. Yeah, well, I don't want to spend the money because it's just not worthy. Yeah, I think if that, that game missed a massive trick. I think if they had invested the time in building out the proper Pokemon mechanics, yeah, and they'd given me a way to play my friends, they would extend yes, the life of that. Because the biggest problem that's what that I thought game, it was going to be. Well, the problem with it now is if you open that game up and go to any of the local gyms around you. Whereas before, when I was when I was still playing it, they were higher level Pokemon than me, but they were attainable. They felt like they could yeah. be beaten with some effort. Now, obviously, since I've been away for several months, the levels have gone through the roof. They're just mental. And um, trying to comp- you, it's impossible to compete with those Pokemon. So the gyms now are completely off limits if you don't have really high level Pokemon. And these gyms are stacked with like eight to ten Pokemon instead yeah. of the three or four they used to be. So that feels like that's unachievable anymore. That game, that gameplay mechanic is gone. 
So all you've got is the grind and catch process now, which mm. is boring. You know, what I want to do is be able to say, hey, Carl, even if I have to do it when I'm with you rather than over online, is yeah. be able to say, show have a game. Oh, cool, okay, pick your Pokemon, let's have a battle. That would have brought so much more to the plate. But I wouldn't mm. want to do that even now, though, without the proper... Um, Actually adds proper adds, animal mechanics, you know, the the move sets. Yeah. Actually adds some sort of gameplay to it, doesn't it? More than yeah. anything. So um I think for those who are still playing, eighty new Pokemon if you're interested. Gold and silver if you used to play them, but that's kind of where I dipped out of Pokemon. Gold and silver was the last game I properly yeah. played and I remember enjoying that one and, and all the new Pokemon after Gold that, and Silver I, was I got brilliant. lost. So uh, I'm not sure I'd know any of the new ones since then to be fair. But yeah, so Pokemon Go is getting some new bits and pieces. Now Carl. Cool. A couple of things that you added here that you picked up on. So let, I'm going to let you jump in on this one and lead the way. Final Fantasy VII. Okay. Tell me about these two new Yes. Uh, well, they were released by um, obviously the people who are creating them. They had their little anniversary thing the, the other week. And um, we've got two Square new... Um, pardon? Square Enix. Yes, Square Enix. Um yeah, we've got two new screenshots of what looks like the, the Guard Scorpion from which is effectively the first boss in the uh, Mitoria reactor or no, it's not Mitoria. Um can't remember what it's called oh, now, but yeah, the first reactor that you uh, that you take down at the beginning of the game. Uh you, you fight a boss and it looks like Cloud and, and Barrett are um fighting it and i think they come around and say there's a lot of destructible um pieces around the environment and stuff which looks interesting it adds a little bit more uh, polish um so and then the, the other one it definitely looks like there's been some damage in the background but that could just be yeah because uh, this is after the um the reactor erupts i think right. mako mako reactor that's what it's called mako reactor but i remembered it um but yeah looks interesting there's all these sort of little dots on the floor which kind of look like a little uh, attack can you see them yeah, you've got the the. I think that's going to be like one of the attacks from the uh, the guard scorpion. There's going to be because I think he's got a tail that you can kind of see in the background. Well, actually, um, look in the air. I think that's where the missiles are going because if you look in the air, oh yes, you can see the air making yeah. their way down that's to the it. ground. That's what that's what I was going to say. I think it come from the tail. There's going to be some missiles sort of firing down and stuff. Just going to step in for uh, a second and say, if anyone is listening to this and not watching it on YouTube then I apologise that you don't know what the hell we're talking about. But if you do check out the video or look online, yeah. uh, you can see the image we're describing at this point. So apologies well, you might have already seen the images. Only listening. But yeah, if you, if you have seen them already. So yeah, I can I can see those missiles coming down. It looks really... Uh, so I'm assuming then those targets that you're referring to on the ground is uh, where you don't want to be standing. Uh, possibly, yes. <laughs> but yeah, it looks, uh, looks really cool. I mean, the graphics, it looks amazing. Um, looks very um, Advent Children-esque. To a certain yeah. extent, like the character models. Um, and the second yeah, you can image, see, there's not as much going on, is there? No, this it kind of looks like a like a cover mechanic to a certain extent, mm. which is weird. Um, and I thought it might be like a stealth bit to begin with, but it looks like he's already been seen because it looks like he's getting shot at. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know what they're doing there. Not really much to say about that one, really. That just the environments look really good. Yeah, I was going to say even the detail. It sounds really stupid in the floor tiles. Yeah, in that particular image is is really really impressive, and um, I also notice in the com uh, the command menu materia. So yeah. obviously we we going. I mean, I really like that mechanic from Final Fantasy VII. I think that was a really mm. clever. Be interesting to see that. how they go, where they go with it. And obviously, you've got the limit break as well. He's got a limit break there in the bottom right corner. You can see that glowing up yellow. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. So I mean, these two images specifically, the the one with the battle uh, the scorpion tank. Um, it definitely seems to, to uh, confirm what we thought, which was that they've stepped away from the original mechanics of the uh, the battling, though, in Final Fantasy yeah. VII. And this yeah, is much more akin to what we've seen in probably 15. Yeah, 15 and... The one before uh, that. Not 13. A little bit. 13 was turn-based. So, uh, but yeah, it was the other one, wasn't it? Top Zero? Yeah. Top Best Zero is very similar to that. So as a Final Fantasy VII fan, which... I obviously know you very well to be, and I think mm. people have probably gathered now who've been listening to us for a while. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm excited. You're excited? I'm okay. Excited. I wasn't yeah. sure whether you'd be wary of that change. Uh, I, I I prefer them to be turn-based because I feel that's... You know, I've been playing them for a while, and that's where I enjoy them. I mean, I enjoyed 15. It did get a bit repetitive. It was kind of just press this one button over and over again to win. But then I do love Advent Children and 
if they're going to give me that in a game form, then uh, I can't really complain. Fair enough. And you'll almost certainly be playing that with the uh, Japanese audio track. Um, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> I know that's not popular with a lot of people, but yeah, I do. Um, I do prefer the voice acting. As I'm watching you play it because it's I not just, a game that I'll be picking up. But. I, yeah, I prefer the voice acting. I've always watched them subbed. I think dubbed is just it's awful. Yeah. Fair enough. So yeah, and I think uh, the guy who released it or at one of the press conferences, he said. Uh, what did he say now? He's put a lot of attention into the combat system and it's going to happen without interruption, which is um, kind of a bit like what happened with 15 as well, to, to a certain extent. Okay. Um, yeah, the scenery is going to be partly destructible. Obviously, they can't destroy it all because I think they're standing on top of a reactor there. So I think <laughs> if, all, if all got destroyed, they'd all be dead. So, yeah, can't wait. Fantastic. Uh, I think they've said obviously it's going to get the scheduled release or like like, like the seasons effectively. Yeah. But each season is practically going to be a full game. They were saying, so right. it's it's going to be. I think it's going to be it's going to be really different. Well, it's probably going to be expensive <laughs> as well. Yeah, without a doubt. But you know, fanboys. Well, I was going to say that's a seamless segue there from one thing we are fanatical about to another, and this is a shared, oh, yes. um, <laughs> a shared love here. So. Indeed. Video game related, but also movie industry. So I'm sure we'll talk about this again on on our uh, fortnightly podcast. Oh yes, but, uh, Metal Gear Solid the movie, which I didn't even realise had been properly greenlit. It's been in, in rumoured development for ages now. Oh yeah, it's been um, we now know the director and the screenwriter have been confirmed. Yeah. Now the screenwriter's name is Jay Basu. Um, he's apparently well sought after. I'm, I'm, we could really do with someone like Chris involved at this point. For those who listen to our normal podcast, he loves this stuff. He'd know these guys. We, we unfortunately aren't so familiar. Um, and the director is the guy who's doing uh, Kong Skull Island. Um, mm-hmm. And he's done, oh, what was his previous film? It'll come back to me. But uh, I mean, I don't really care who the direct, who's the director that's going to be, to be honest. The fact they're making this movie is exciting enough for me. I, it, I it just kind of came out of nowhere. It. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, I think. Um, I think a lot of the incident as well. It could go horribly wrong. There's a huge story to try and weave into a couple of hours, and it very much depends on, I guess, which story they go for. I doubt it'll be an original one. I assume it's going to be a retelling of one of the games. Yeah, I can't say it being an original. Do we think, given that they're calling this Metal Gear Solid movie at the moment, and they've got no other title for it, that that is going to be the PlayStation One original Metal Gear Solid? Well, I think if they were, I think that would have to be the only one that would be conceivable for me because I mean every other one is going to have a lot of backstory a lot of mm. things that you're going to need I mean it depends on what they're going to do they're either going to do it for the fanboys the people who know the game played the game and want to see a film of it or yeah. they're going to be they're going to cater to people who have never seen it don't know what they're doing and they're just going oh that looks cool we'll go and watch that so I don't I really I, hope that's not mm, the case I hope <laughs> it's not the case I as well uh, example A yeah <laughs> I think um, the, the... but even that even that's going to be tricky Oh, if that film's not three hours, I don't know how they're going to do it. Exactly. It just there's so much to tell. If you think about, it, so we're talking about Shadow Moses, aren't we? That's the that's the mm-hmm. one we're sort of Shadow Moses Island. <laughs> and I think that's the one you really want. So you've yes. got you've got to try and weave the story of uh, Solid and Liquid. Mm-hmm. You've got the bad guys around that. So you've got Raven, who's probably not as big a challenge, but you've got Psycho Mantis, which you know Sniper, Sniper Wolf. Wolf. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ditto. You've got. Then you've got things like Meryl and Otacon to weave into it. Yeah. Uh, Grey Fox. I mean, you know, uh, Ocelot. I mean, bloody hell, there's so many oh, yeah. big characters to build into that. Um, I don't know how you do it. Uh, then you've got Metal Gear Rex. <laughs> then, you've got, then you've got, yeah, the, the actual uh, robot at the end of it. I kind of feel like if they're going to do it, it needs to be a long sort of fleshed out film. Maybe they need to cut some of those enemies to keep the numbers down because otherwise yeah. I feel like they're not going to get enough love and attention I don't know how I'd feel about that but I also think having uh, going completely off having just said how much I, I'm excited about the movie I almost feel like this would be a better TV series mm. can you imagine a TV series 10 episodes telling the story of Shadow Moses where you could build those characters in and the plot lines and all the stuff that goes with it I mean that could just be the first season couldn't it you could have the second season could be um, going back to Big Boss yeah. uh, all sorts Interestingly, um, there's little or no information about this anywhere. I'd look at IMDb. IMDb lists the movie as having the director we've we've just mentioned from Skull Island attached, uh, the screenwriter we've mentioned, and the only other name on that film uh, is uh, Hideo Kojima. Yeah. Now, I don't know where that stands because 
obviously Kojima created Metal Gear, but everyone knows, you know, who's interested in gaming knows he's unceremoniously got booted out of Konami. Who owns the rights to Metal Gear? Konami still own the rights to Metal Gear, but does he have the rights to the story? Can he tell the story without Konami? Well, this this is why it kind of came out of left field because as soon as he left Konami, you'd think, well, you know, any any other thing going forward, yeah. like especially film wise, is just not going to happen. And then I seen this video of this guy talking about Metal Gear, and I was like, "How old is this? A couple of days." It just it just confused me. It could come up. So, is there going to be a new film, or is this? I just I just don't know where it was, where it was coming from. And I was like, I was getting excited. I sort of, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was again. I thought it was some sort of old news, and then watched it, and, and like you reacted the same way. I think there's still no literally no information out there about what it's going to be, and, and what more we can expect from it. Casting rumors. Um, We've we've talked about this before, but I'm going to ask you on the podcast, Carl. Who's your solid snake? <laughs> um, I think at first it was meant to be Christian Bale. I think he was touted oh to begin God, with. Really? Yeah. Um, I'd like to see David Hayter do it. Really? For, for, okay. for, for the voice, and I think it might be a bit too old for it now. Um, I suppose it depends on how they're going to go through it, but. I was going to say, I'd, Solid Snake, I'd, I think, was relatively yeah. old, wasn't he, in Shadow Moses. He wasn't like yes, a sprightly young soldier. He was meant to be a But then he, he the field, was pretty he? much just a pixelated face then, wasn't well, he? Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can only go on box art, can't you, really, for that? Yeah, yeah. So I've got one, and, got and this guy's going to have nothing to do now because he's going to, uh, by the end of next week, he's finished his run as the Wolverine. So I think okay. Hugh Jackman. Mm. That's my. I can see him with the bandana... Uh, not the bandana, sorry, the bandana? What do you call it? Yeah, yeah, it's called a bandana. Yeah, bandana. Uh, yeah. And the sneaking suit. I think he's got the sort of gruff. He's old enough now that he's probably could oh, pull yeah, off that gruff sort of uh, veteran-like soldier. He's still got enough about him that someone like Meryl would be completely hot for him. Um, I think it could be Hugh Jackman. I don't think it will be, but I'd love it if it was. Yeah. I think if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be a fairly unknown actor, I'd mm. imagine. I can't see it being. But I'm not just saying that a lot of video game movies have had people that we've yeah. all known and stuff, so well, I don't know. As good as, as much as I like him, he doesn't get all the best movies. He's picked some no, some, no. some bum films in the past. Oh, it's yeah. not like he's you're not like you're casting you know um Brad Tom Pitt or Brad Pitt yeah, or someone, yeah. yeah, you know, you're getting someone here who's doing a bit of a mix, you know. Ultimately he's famous for being Wolverine for God's sake, you know, that's not Yeah. It's not exactly uh high Oscar winning performances is it but um, mm-hmm. I think he'd be really good as it and I think he's got the right kind of personality to play what at least I believe to be Solid Snake and I think he's grizzly kind of got that he can do the sort of beaten down thing he's got that inner anger he's also a little bit suave and charming he could be which I think at times Solid Snake can be so he'd be my pick anyway okay then so I'm going to throw something else at you now okay. would you get it, would you get him to play Liquid as well because they are no. clones are they clones? Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Would okay. you? So who would you get to? Oh, would you? Yeah, I could see him. Obviously, his personality would be completely different. He'd have to play two different characters, which would be really interesting. Yeah. Um, but who really, would you get to play Liquid? Do you not think it might feel a little bit like Austin Powers, though? <laughs> Is it going to be Dr. Evil and Austin? I, don't, I just think I, I don't, I don't know if I want so. to see him play both ends of that. I, don't, I feel like if you were going to tell that story in cinema... I don't think after all those years that a clone would necessarily have to look identical. I think you could find someone with some prosthetics, make someone look suitably genetically similar. Yeah. I mean, they were never sold as being identical, were they? They were sold as looking very similar. Yeah. Know. Maybe I you'd guess. have to. Maybe you'd have to. I don't know. It, it, it's also, different hair and stuff. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You could literally just put a put wig, a wig on. on him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could do. Well, so many characters it's not in our hands, cast. unfortunately. <laughs> That's what we should do. I think uh, once we know a bit more about this film, we should maybe do on the uh, on the podcast, the, the core podcast, where we, we talk more about movies and TV, uh, which you can find on iTunes, by the way. Uh, we should maybe go through uh, some of those key characters we'd like to see once we know what the stories they're looking to retell. And yeah, if it yeah. is confirmed to Shadow Moses, maybe we should have a go at casting the whole cast. That's that's if it actually goes ahead. You know this these things true. that could be this like, oh, no, we're not doing it now. This is true. Again. Well... Um, it just seems like a suitable time to plug how you can contact us so if you want to get in touch with us uh, share your views on how you cast the Metal Gear Solid movie uh, and your concerns about it then you can email us at bossbattlenetwork at gmail.com or get us on Twitter at bossbattlenet 
Okay, so um, those are a couple of sort of news items. Let's talk a little bit then about a game I've been playing this week. We touched on it in episodes one and two actually of button mashing. We we played the beta, or we anticipated the beta. We played it and we discussed it. And at the time, we both agreed we weren't going to go out and buy it. And then I did. <laughs> and then you have. Yeah, <laughs> so you project, right? We've done it anyway. So yeah, um, I, I had a I had a weak moment. I, I I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. I mean, uh, you got a good review, so. I have to admit, yeah, I, I didn't buy it on release, so I bought it I don't know, like the day after, admittedly. Um, but I bought it <clears throat> because I didn't properly stop thinking about it after the beta. Not in a weird kind of in, intense way, but it was one of those games that kept coming back to me. I kind of felt like I wanted to do more of it. I wanted to find out a bit more. Um, yeah. Obviously, we had the reviews. That went pretty well, and I decided to pick it up off the back of that. Um I have to say, I don't regret it. I've really, really enjoyed playing that game. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It's um, it's definitely one you can pick up and play. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've probably put I've put quite a few hours into it. I've, I've played about, probably about, I say quite a few. Any truly hardcore gamers are going to sort of laugh at this, but given my time constraints, I've played about 10 or 11 hours of that, I think, since it came out, and that's a little over a week now. So mm. that's not bad going for me. That's a few evenings I've managed to stick into that, maybe even more than that, to be honest. Um and I'm certainly not bored of it, and I've only really scratched the surface. I've played as two characters, really, um, and I've I've only just recently switched over to the second character of those, and uh, I've, I've gone for the and I should know the class name now. It's the giant Viking with the shield and the sword. I've just moved on to him, and um, yeah, I'm loving it. I just want to play more. I haven't, haven't really done much of the single player. The single player, to be honest, is very much about teaching you the initial combat. Yeah, um, yeah. Again. There is an underlying story there, but it's they're fairly short little challenges and short missions. I am interested still, though, to see where the story goes because it seems to show a few different people's views of mm-hmm. this woman who's uh, who's leading the Blackstone Army. That's what they're called, Blackstone Army, Black Iron, okay. Ironstone Army. Oh, I can't remember. You have I'm to look for yourself. Yet, but yeah. <laughs> um, they're quite good. They just basically uh, serve to feed you some practice rounds. Basically, Here's but so that there's meant to be um, some good boss fights in there. Uh, uh, everything everything before a boss fight is so easy to take down that the boss fights feel yeah, challenging yeah, yeah. but they're not that much different to facing someone in multiplayer combat to be honest okay. and they're not as exciting because you know it's all scripted it's, you know, there's a, it's I did see a, a big elephant at one point I haven't got that video, far, so I don't know whether, okay. what that is and, and how you interact with that there's a few interesting set pieces and there are a few um, mechanics that you would use that you don't use within the, the actual multiplayer game but the, that whole thing is multiplayer really the whole game is meant to be yeah, multiplayer yeah yeah um, the multiplayer that I've really enjoyed, I've sunk a good few hours into that. I've actually been relatively good at it, and that's continued over from the beta, which is unusual. Um, I, I've been ranking quite highly in most of my matches, which is not like me. Um, but that's probably why I'm still interested in, in still playing. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's um, it's good. I, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I certainly don't regret the purchase. I can see me putting a number more hours into it. Probably not going to play it so much in the next few weeks, uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, so far... Certainly don't regret it. I would highly recommend it to anyone thinking about buying it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, don't don't worry about waiting until it drops in price. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you like those kind of combat games. And the mechanics of the fighting really do run much deeper than even I realised. Oh, the beta. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. really, really cool. And, and I did the advanced tutorial, which I didn't do during the beta, and um, picked up some of the parrying techniques and stuff like yeah, that. Different yeah, different moves. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Really cool. Um, and then that brings us on to our, our sort of last talking point. Which is the release coming this week, or one of the releases? We'll, we'll cover a few of the other ones off. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn is out next week. Uh, it's been reviewed this week, which was really fortunate because my money didn't go out from game until after the reviews had been posted. Oh, All right. the reviews generally have been really favourable. Some high schools, IGN, who I tend to read a lot, gave it a, a 9.3, and I did check around to see if that was just unique to them, and it's not. It's getting really well, good, rece- uh, good reviews, even everywhere that you look. I pre-ordered the special edition for anyone who listened to us on uh, episode two. Uh, I've decided to stick with that based on on that uh, scoring. <clears throat> so yeah, a game have confirmed they are packaging my special edition, and it's on its way. I will be doing an unboxing video for anyone who hasn't already seen one, as interested in seeing what it looks like, and I'll share that um, hopefully on the same day that it comes to me next Wednesday. Uh, and I've booked some time off work even to stick a few hours into this on Wednesday afternoon. Oh, really? Yeah, Ooh. just a few. Uh, I had a half day it takes. So I thought, why not? So okay. uh, I'm sticking a few hours into that to uh, to give it a go. So I will be intending to stream that for anyone who wants to see it as well. So that was my uh, game I'm looking forward to. Carl, you picked one up 
already, which came out last week. And you're, I think you also plan to stream that? Yeah, uh, Sniper Elite 4. I like my Sniper games. Um, I'm going to try and up the difficulty a little bit on this. Because I, I watched a couple of videos and a couple of streams on it. And there's this uh, heavy uh, uh, the lung thing, empty lung, that's the one. And it kind of just gives you an arrow that you have to go to to kill the person. Uh, or to a certain extent. I don't think it's that clear cut when you're actually playing the game. But I don't like that. I like to... I like it to be a bit more sim, in a way. Yeah, a bit more realistic. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be giving that a go. I might regret it and end up dying really quickly. But uh, we'll see. I'll, uh... Might we see the destruction of a pad? No. Oh. No. I was no. going to say, I give people a reason to tune in, Carl. <laughs> what, to watch me break a hundred yeah. and ten pound pad? Break a hundred pounds worth of Elite Controller. Yeah, you probably see me cry afterwards. <laughs> yeah. cry afterwards. No, that'll, be, that'll, be for, that'll be for Neo, that will. Oh, uh, yes, that's on your shopping list as well, isn't it? So you picked up... Uh, yeah, yeah. So your moment of weakness was quite expensive, wasn't it? You had For Honor and um, Sniper Elite 4. Yeah, £84, I think, in the end. Nice. I, I did originally go for Sniper Elite and um, Neo, but Neo wasn't there, so I bought For Honor instead. Because okay. I was going to pick it up, so I'm not exactly unhappy. Fair play. I'll save Neo for another time. So Sniper Elite 4 will be able to see... Uh, some of the gameplay on Twitch, and you're going to probably give us, I guess, some more in-depth reactions next time we record. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Excellent. So, um, just last thing then, before we wrap the episode up, we uh, want to cover off what's coming in the next week. Now, for a change, there's actually quite a lot coming out uh, in the next week, and um, one thing that came out this weekend, which we wanted to just mention as well. So, we've already covered the Switch and Zelda, so if, you know, if you're a Nintendo fan, lots to look forward to this week. Horizon Zero Dawn, if you're a PlayStation player, um, which is another solid one. And for Xbox players, it's not great all you can do, but you could this weekend have been enjoying the Ghost Recon Wildlands open beta. Mm-hmm. Um, not something I'm overly fussed about, I've got to be brutally honest. But uh, Carl, uh, I've, I've got it downloaded. I haven't played it yet. I might you give it a go it. this afternoon. So I'll, uh, I'll have a... Mind you, it's out on the 7th. Is that the so 7th? It's out, it? so not next week, it's the week, week after. after. Okay. Yeah. I've got to be honest, I'm not fussed about that. And I think it's a strange time for it to come out, but uh, maybe it's not aimed at me. Just everything I've seen of it just looks a little bit... Yeah, big vast open world and nothing in it. Yeah, dudes with guns and a helicopter. I'm not really sold on that, but could be really good. I'm sure it'll sell pretty well as long as the service can hold up and it can it can do everything it needs to do. I did uh, have to say, I, I do think about a funny parody for um, a video for Ghost Recon, looking okay. at the word Wildlands and being from England and in the Midlands. I do think it'd be really funny to do something like <laughs> Ghost Recon the Midlands. Okay. Um, but uh, I'm not sure what that would look like or what that could be, but it, it tickled me when I thought about it. So, um, Carl, anything else to add to this episode? Or do we call it... Uh, a- there's, there is Nia Automata. Uh, Nia Automata. Yeah, yeah. Nia Automata. Uh, that is technically out in Japan now, and I've seen a few people streaming that. Mm-hmm. It's weird, really, because it's out in Japan, but it's got all English text, all the English language... Right. So why is it not out anywhere else? If it's yeah. all pretty much done, so that's that was weird for me. Well, don't um, forget that, that there are other countries in Europe other than England. Yeah, I know. That's why mm, we always get screwed over in Europe. Yeah, that's true. But then it's not out in America either. Oh, right, so okay. Interesting. I don't get it. And, and, and the that's release what you're date still in, got. It? Yeah, it is. Yeah, the release date has still got um, quarter one. Well, March effectively. Yeah. Um, but you'd you'd imagine it's going to be coming out fairly soon. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I had. A, I've seen a lot of people asking on the streams and stuff like, "How are you playing this? This isn't out yet." Mm. And it's actually, I, I think, if you create a Japanese account on your PlayStation, you can just download it digitally. So I could okay. probably play it now if I wanted to, but I've got enough to play now. It's just a faff, isn't it? I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's not so... too bad because I had to make an American account to play uh, a five-pound version of um... The Last of Us. Yes. I remember you telling me. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So that was all right. Cool. Okay, so Neo Automata, yeah. that's also out this week then. So something else we could play if they well, want to. Technically, it should be out this week or next week, but well, it hasn't actually got an actual date, I don't think. Is it well, not? not that I can say. No, no, it just still says March. Actually, actually right. I know Jenny, it still says quarter one, 2007. <laughs> uh, 2007, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> it's been back in time there. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. 
Brilliant. In that case, then, uh, we'll call it a wrap there. If you uh, want to get in touch, as I mentioned earlier, you can email us at bossbattlenetwork at gmail.com or you can tweet us at bossbattlenet. Uh, we do a podcast, um, just audio only, on iTunes if you want to pick that up or you've, uh, if you listen to this audio only, then you can watch this one in video on YouTube where we have a few other videos as well. Uh, and as we've mentioned a couple of times in the last few minutes, we also stream on Twitch. So check us out on there if you want to see us playing Horizon Zero Dawn next week and also Sniper Elite 4. So uh, yep. otherwise, uh, anything else from you, Carl? Nope, I'm good. Fantastic. In that case, we'll call it a wrap. Thanks a lot, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.